what space is there for the Biden administration to actually take any drastic action? Is it way too late? Should this have happened way sooner? And now they're basically in a situation where their hands are tied from now until November. Biden has been on the forefront of American foreign policy for one fifth of America's history. That's a long time. That's a hell of a way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And he has formed his view of what the politics around Israel is back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He's not updated himself with how the politics of this issue has changed dramatically. We are not in the 1990s in which APEC was so powerful you could not even say its name. We're now in a situation in which members of Congress on the Republican and Democratic side, and I say Republicans even, are fundraising off of opposing APEC. This was unthinkable 10 years ago. You have a grassroots movement in the Democratic Party, which is the most energetic element of the uh, Democratic base right now, that are dead set against the policies of Biden on this issue, who have come in a generation of new American leaders. All of these students at Columbia and Harvard and MIT, this is the future elite of this country, who have come to view Israel as a result of what Israel has done as an apartheid state, as a genocidal state that is also a threat to American democracy. I'm not making judgment as to whether they're right or wrong. I'm describing how they're seen. And they vote. They're important. Uh, And I remember I was here 30 years ago, 20 years ago. It was a dramatically different atmosphere. The idea that you would publicly speak out against AIPAC, let alone fundraise off of your opposition to APAC and things like that. It was unthinkable back then. Things have changed. Those changes, Harris cannot wish away. It is costly for her to go back to Biden's policy. Doesn't mean that she may not. I'm just pointing out that it's costly, whereas it wasn't costly 20, 30 years ago. And this is also true on the Republican side. On the Republican side, you have a very strong movement at the grassroots level that have really taken on this idea of America first. I'm not saying it's a sophisticated doctrine or anything like that, but there's some core ideas in it. And they're very strongly opposed to funding wars elsewhere. They're very much opposed to the way that the United States is funding the war in Ukraine. They certainly are opposed to uh, uh, sending troops to Ukraine. And now polls show also that a majority of Americans oppose sending troops to defend Israel. You cannot really adopt that view coherently and then make an exception for Israel. Because Israel is the country that is most likely to drag the United States into another war. If you make an exception for Israel, you've essentially nullified the idea of America first. It has become meaningless if you make an exception for Israel. This wasn't necessarily the case four years ago or six years ago, but we've seen a movement amongst that constituency in which they have tried to make some of those ideas more coherent And part of making it more coherent is to be less tolerant of exceptions to it.